So for the next question it tells us, given the plan and elevation of the cylinder and the trace of the plane VTH, show the projections of the cylinder when it is cut by the oblique plane VTH. So the same idea as the first one. We draw our elevation and plan and we divide up our plan this time to a number of equal points and take them up and across to find their projections in the cut. So I already have it set up there in terms of the elevation and plan just to speed up the video. So what I need to do first is divide it up into a number of equal parts. So my 36 set square. And then just label them all. So I'll just start off with the left hand side and start at 9 there. So we're making sure to go at the angle given, so it's 45 degrees for the horizontal trace. That goes up there, straight up and across, and there's 9 there. And let's go around then from 8, so 8 goes up and across. Take 8 up here. Then 7 is on the same one. So what I do is just take 7 up there. That's 7. And then 6. And 6 on this line here. After that then, I have 5, so 5 will go across, and take 5 straight up here, so then that's 6, then 5, and then I have 4, and 3 will go just straight up there, I already have it drawn for the outside edge. And three goes past there. And then two and one are going to be on the same line as well. So I can take the two of them together. So two is on the same line as four. And one is going to be on the same line as five. And then I have zero and pass it through three. So you put it up, across, and over. So I have zero. And then one. Sorry, 11 passes through 4. So 11 across and 11 up on the same line as 7. And then finally 10 happens to be the same one as 5. So 10 goes across there. Same line as 8. That's 10. And that's all my points now taken up and across. All to do now. Draw on the actual freehand curve then. And then just draw it in nice and neatly heavy afterwards, trying to keep to one continuous line. And take my lines down heavy. The extreme generators. I'll take that across. What I'll just do is use the color. I've been doing the first thing, I'll just use the color to show one of my points in particular. So I'll just show a 9 there, for example. So 9 goes up there, goes parallel to my horizontal trace, 9 goes straight up, where it hits the vertical trace, it then goes straight across. And where 9 is in plan, it'll go straight up to meet it. Same for example here, if I just show B. B goes parallel to the horizontal trace. It goes straight up. Take the vertical trace. And goes 
cross. And then where B is in plan. Take that straight up there to meet it. That just shows the length to there. So for the last one it tells us, given the plan and elevation of a square base pyramid and the trace of plane VTH, draw the projection in the solid after it has been cut by the oblique plane. So with this one it's slightly different. We can't actually see the full cut surface in plan as it's not fully cut. So what we need to do is we need to create an edge view, like an auxiliary, to see where all the points are cut. So when we use the example yesterday of how to do the true inclination, if we use the auxiliary view method, we can see an edge view of the plane. If we see an edge view of a plane, we can see exactly the true heights of where the cut occurs every single time. So just to set up this question, let's start the centre of the page, I'll draw my XY line. And I'll take my 30 degree line from this way. And for plan, the trace is going at 45 degrees. So you'll see later on the question, the reason being for actually taking the auxiliary. So I have my vertical trace here and my horizontal trace here. I'm told that I go across 60. And I go down 50 for the base, for the bottom corner of my square. I'm told the size of the square is going to be 44 by 44. So I take 44 there. And just draw my diagonals. And that can give me the lengths of my sides there as well. Save me having to measure them over and over again. So for now I'm just going to leave everything like so I don't know where the cut is exactly going to take place yet. And what I can do is just draw my elevation lightly as well. And the height of my pyramid is going to be 80. So I can connect that to there. And I can connect that to there. So to take my auxiliary, I want to see my horizontal trace as a point. So I can see my edge view of the cut. So I'm taking a view of the front this way, drawing an auxiliary elevation. So there's my x1, y, x1, y1 there. And I'll take down, or take up, sorry, all of my corners there. And that center one is going to go all the way to there. And I have this edge here as well. So my height is 80. There's my center. Take that up. I'm going to draw the pyramid once again as if it hasn't been cut. So that's it looking at it as if. I'll just extend that out there just to write it on. So Y1 there, X1 there. So there's the pyramid drawn as if it hasn't been cut once again. Looking in at that angle there. So going in perpendicular, or sorry, parallel to my horizontal trace. There's my trace there on the ground. And if I want to find what angle is inclined as so I can see where the cut occurs all the way along, what I need to do is pick a point just like I would have before. So I go in perpendicular, for example, from here. The idea of drawing the cone idea again. But this time I'm doing the auxiliary method. Take this height here, and I apply it out here. It's a point in my plane. So I'm taking this point in my plane out here and projecting it and taking it up to find its height. And then that gives me my oblique plane there that's been cut. <coughs> so now I can see all the heights that's actually cut for each of them corners. So I just draw in heavy my actual pyramid there. The rest of it's all been cut away. 
And that's the true inclination of the oblique plane. And because of the true inclination, we can see the heights of all of our cuts as a result. So I'm just going to label each of my sides here. So we'll pick A, B, C, D. So A is on the ground there. Where is A cut? It's cut on that point there. Take that back in. Cuts that corner there. B and D are on the same line. So what I need to do is, I can't actually mark them back there. So what I can do is I can take that height and apply it to my elevation. So take that height. So I'll mark it in color there from yellow, for example. So I'm taking that height there. Right here it's a height for B and D. So B is that slope surface going there. There's the height for B. There's the height for G. <coughs> and then the last one I've left is C. So you can actually see the edge there for C. There's the height for there. So just mark B and D there. There's C. C will be given there. So I currently have A and C there and there. B, I can now drop down to my plan. Gives me B there. D, I can drop into plan. Gives me that point there. And there's the true shape. I'm sorry, the true shape of my cut. There's the plan of my cut there. All I have to do is just draw the outsides of it now. So I'll label them once again. So C will come up to here. Let's get this last part done. There's C. D already have. A is there and B is here. Now I can connect them up in my elevation. <coughs> and then there's my cut actually showing now. So my elevation and plan of my cut. And I use my auxiliary view to see mainly the true height for B and D. So if I take B and D back, I can't actually mark it off, whereas A and C are sloping this way. I can see exactly where A hits the line there, and C hits the line there. And because of the auxiliary elevation, it's the same heights here, so I can take B and D and just apply it here and here for the actual question then. So hopefully that video helps anybody who may have been stuck on any of the questions that we had to do for today.